Welcome to the Scarf Begar War, proudly sponsored by the Players' Entrance at Covent Garden Cafe and the Royal Oak Edgerly. Oh, great flick on by Alan Armstrong. Good evening, Fallowfield's beardiest man Nick Lee here, and welcome to a brand new episode of the New Look Scarf Bergara War, the county podcast by the fans, for the fans. Now, when I say New Look, I mean more in a sense of Jim's had six months to assess the squad, now he can make it his own, rather than, oh, this new chief executive has pointy shoes, and what the fuck's he doing with them bins? Now, I can't do this all on my own, I'm no Superman, so it gives me great pleasure to introduce, as ever, Russ Johnson and Dave Espley. How are we doing, chaps? Hey up. Hey up. Cracking. Now, before we move on to Matt's from Edgeley Park, Russ, you've got a bit of admin for us, haven't you? It's like a parish note, parishes notices, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you yeah, call it, yeah. yeah, parish newsletter. Parish newsletter, yeah, so um, it's kind of, well, what I start with an apology, um, that this isn't Dark Day Sorry, mate, can I just quickly stop you there? Uh, just a quick message to Craig Phillips, who I worked with back in 2012. Uh, I hated every second of working with you. Um, I'm just putting that out there, because I'm a weirdo, and that's what you do now, apparently. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Seemed like working. Anyway, yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, so just apologise, it's not the, uh, Dark Days Part 3. We did advertise that, but we were let down by Phil Brennan, um, who's promised to bring us some uh, digestive biscuits. So but, but then he, he said something he said else. would be better than that. They're very flaky, these media sorts, aren't they? <laughs> not the biscuits. <laughs> um, so yeah, he said, he said it'd be something better than that, so we'll, um, yeah, like you said, David, sounds filthy. <laughs> so Jim Gannon and Phil Brennan are now in the doghouse. Yes. That's got a yeah. podcast goals. Um, so yeah, and... I just want to say as well, we have obviously had lots of new listeners um, over the past two episodes because of the dark days, and hopefully they come back and listen to this. So if you are listening to this and you are new to, to us, then we just to let you know, we've been going since January 2015, um, so we're quite well established. We're not affiliated to the club or any organisation around the club, we're completely independent. We're not raising money for the club, we're not doing anything like that, it's completely independent. Think factory records, but with less contracts signed in blood. That is exactly right. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah, love it. And if you have, if you have just listened to the Dark Days and then don't want to listen to the rest, you're a bit weird. Because yeah. to be honest, you know, okay, Dark Days, get it out of the way. It's like a boil that needs to be lanced. But then you're talking about good stuff. Yeah. So there is plenty it's, of good stuff fun. to it's counterbalance fun. it. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You'll enjoy it. Um, just, just on the Dark Days as well, we will make that available afterwards. I don't know how, but I'm sure we can make that available for people to download for free. What's happening with the film rights? Has, has anyone bought the film right yet? No, no one's, right. no one's oh, approached us yet. I'm hanging on any day now. <laughs> who, who are you going to play? Ryan. <laughs> Got the pointy shoes for it. Can I play Dave Schofield? <laughs> <laughs> are, you with, are you with me? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. Um, and we have some exciting news uh, to announce as well. Um, we've never had any monetary input to this podcast in the four and a nearly five years that I've been I've been doing it it's all come out of my, my pocket and Nick's pocket and the old Phil's pocket so we've actually got three sponsors now which you'll have heard at the top of the show um, we've got uh, at Covent Garden who are on Lower Hillgate uh, ran by Mark and Becca and I think it, in fact with the, with the sponsors I think you could do like a sponsor crawl up to up to the match that's an idea, yeah, that's an idea. idea. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. kick the fuck out of some boring wood fans on the way <laughs> both of them brilliant um, so yeah Cafe on uh, on Lower Hillgate at Covent Garden, and then we've got the players entrance on Mersey Way. Um, that's run by County fan uh, Motti. Keep the fuck out of some virtual Bournemouth fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you could, yeah. You more chance of finding a virtual one <laughs> than you have of a normal one. We will go into a bit more depth about these about these sponsors as the uh, as the podcast roll on. Um, and then the last one is the Royal Oak on Castle Street, which is actually run by my mum, who's the oh. landlady. That's nice, isn't oh, it? Okay. Isn't she nice? Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, so you'll see our posters in those venues in, in due course, which will allow us to get better equipment and make this podcast better for you. So you should, he says, hear the improvement in the sound quality because we know it's been a bit flaky in the nearly five years that we've been doing it. Individual mics. Oh. With stands and everything. That's going to be great. So, so that's that. And just, just finally, um, oh, well, two final points. We are going to start publishing on Spotify now that we have got the right music and stuff. So that'll be on this after this episode. It'll be available on Spotify for those that use that as their player. And 
Um, can I just ask that whatever platform or player you are listening to us on, can you please like and put a review on? Because uh, that obviously just gets the gets us out there to more county fans. That's only our aim is to get as many county fans listening to this as possible. We're not in it for the money. It doesn't earn us any money. We do it for the fun of it. Speak for yourself. I know. When, it, when, yeah. when this yeah. when this happens. Sorry, mate. Strictly money and bitches, mate. <laughs> <laughs> You're not getting paid, lads. You're not getting paid. Uh, so that was it. That was short and sweet. But I, th- I thought I needed to say that. And pro- probably quite boring as well. So apologies for that. So let's get into the fun stuff. Now, yeah, is it, is it fun? I mean, it's, it's been a mixed start to the season. But I, I, I don't, I don't. I mean, there's been a bit of hysteria after like the odd defeat. But I, I don't, I don't, I don't really see a problem. I think the worst thing was getting was it five in a row. Yeah. I think that that. Call, because take five defeats and just sprinkle them amongst the season so far and you and we are mid table I think most people would have taken that yeah. but the fact we started well and then had that slump that allowed everyone with their agendas you know we, we all knew they are <laughs> to, to come out and just sort of say the world's about to end get him fired let's get new owners in and all the rest of it and you think nah it's, it's not it's not it's not that bad it's just they all happened together yeah but just just before that five that five defeats in a row we went uh, six games and had five victories Exactly. And then went to uh, against some good teams as well. Yeah, against some good teams. Yeah, obviously uh, Wrexham away, filed at home, Chester Chesterfield at home, Barrow at home. So they're all well. No, <laughs> they're not are they? I was going to say that pre-season then you'd all have said yeah, that. Yeah, they're all Yeah, but I think the five games that we lost in a row, um, it was the manner. I think so. Chorley away three 0 which was just that's just abhorrent, isn't it? Yeah. Brawer and Wood away, which yeah okay, we I think we just lost our way in that game a bit. But the Torquay at home one, that was a fiasco. Jesus yeah. Christ! Yeah, shades of Rochdale at home with that one and seven two. Yeah, it could it have been. It could horrible. have been more, couldn't yeah. it? It just could have been. I think was it two on goals as well. Yeah. Like, blimey, um, but since then it's been it's been all right. Uh, we've only lost once since then against Woking. And people always say, don't they? You know, you look at the table. I'd have taken this at the start of the season. I think genuinely, I'm just looking at the table now. Thirteenth, six points off the playoffs. Probably would. Yeah, I think we would. I think people get excited when we when we're up to after that five games, one five games, six people get excited. We're in the playoffs, and people think people think that's the that's the baseline now. Yeah, I want that's what I want now. It's it's, it's not realistic, yeah. especially with the players that we've got, and I'm sure we'll come to that in a second. Are we still? Is, are any teams above us that are part time, or are we the highest placed part time team? Because I think that's a big factor as well. I think if you, if you take that into account, it, it's actually a, be- a much better position than it is anyway, which isn't bad. You know, as I say, thirteenth and six points off the playoffs. But the teams above us, are m- most of them full time. Yeah, I think I think they may well be all yeah, them. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, you, you're playing almost with one hand behind your back anyway. Um, when your players have got jobs to go to, they, they've got injuries that they. they you know they have to. They can't work off because they have to, to work the next day and all the rest of it. They can't rest up. Yeah, I think it must does make a difference. Yeah, and we not. I, I don't understand the training. I think someone's explained it to me. We do we not train full time? I don't. It's somewhere in the middle, in it. I don't know. Are there some players? Well, I think I think the players we're signing going forward are ones that can commit to four days training. Whereas I think part time is two nights a week, isn't it? Right. So we are somewhere in like the hinterland kind of. But it's not thing. ideal, is it, when you've got no. some players have got jobs can't do during the day, other players can do during the day. When do you get them all together? There's only one time you get them all together, and it's in the evening. So yeah. it's still until we have a full time club, we're going to be training in the evenings, yeah. and that's not great. Yeah, but that that just that just sort of says to me how well Jim does with this team. Yeah. Absolutely. He's got he's got a, he's got an absolute hybrid model. He's got players that he's trusted from last season. Who are, some of them are clearly not good enough for this division, yet we still find ourselves in thirteenth. Yeah. And I just think that's that's great. It's almost like the United situation when they had Mourinho. He worked wonders with that team. Since he's left, it's gone to rat shit. Mm. I think if Jim Gannon left, that's probably what would happen to us. Yeah, I mean, Al's done both times he's left yeah. previously, so there's no reason to suggest that. The only, time, the only ca- case it wouldn't happen is if we were bought by somebody who's willing to throw silly money at the club. Let's put that out there. I'm not saying that's going to happen, mm. but I think you're dead right. All other things being equal, we need to keep Jim Gannon. And I know there's a lot of people who are popping up saying new owners need to keep Jim Gannon. And that would be my view, absolutely, yeah. 100%. Just to be devil's advocate, if new owners came in and said, we're going to spend what it takes to get you back to the Football League, but I'm going to bring in my man. I don't know. Yeah. I, made, I made a shrugging gesture then, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, would you take that? Would, would, would you guys take it? Uh, oh, that's a difficult one. That, that does lead me on to Nick's big question. Oh, so we're going to do a, 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 a new feature. Are we, shoot, are we shooting early or? We're trialling this month. 
Um, are we going to do that later? Or? No, no, well, well, you just like, let me answer it. Oh, yeah. So, next big question. There's not really much, well, I say there's not much point in discussing the takeover rumours, but we've just talked shit about it for five minutes. <laughs> so, there's not really much in the way of facts. It all seems to be in the know, people. But the people who do seem to be in the know, it's the ones that are always in the know when we sign someone. They know like three or four days before we sign You get a feeling, don't you, when rumours have got think, some substance, yeah, and I think this is it. one of those. Yeah. Um, but that said, what would you expect from a change of, change of ownership? What would you, you want? What's the bare minimum you expect a new owner to do? Full time. Yeah. yeah, straight away. That's yeah. yeah. Football league. Full time yeah. and football league. I'm not saying necessarily this year, but the, the latest I'd be asking questions didn't get it next year, <laughs> because you know we're a football, we should be a football league club, and... Ten years, however long it is, out of the football league is too much. Too I don't, much. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Full time, yes, that's the first step. Football league, it's kind of, it's not something you can just go out and get, is it? No, no. You, so, so saying next season you'd expect it. Well, yeah, okay, maybe, but you want you want it eventually, don't you? As long as there's a path to it. Yeah, yeah, I, I take I take your point. Um, I suppose what I'm saying is I'd want to be challenging for the football league. Yeah. I wouldn't want to be pissing about halfway down the national league again. No. Um, if we had a full, t- you know, a, a takeover. Because otherwise, what's the point in taking over? Yeah. If, you, if you're not going to take over and improve this situation, don't bother taking over. We're in a situation now, as we know from the Dark Days podcast, where we've we've racked up seven figure debts, and you know we're part time and we're in non league. And if somebody comes in and wants to take over, then obviously the, the seven figure debts will have gone because that'll be part of the takeover deal. You would imagine. But I still don't want to. Be, I couldn't care less if Mr. Richman A has paid off Mr. Richman B's debt. And we're still halfway down the National League. Yeah. If you, if you come in as a fan, I want to see improvement on the pitch. Is Rich Manet from that French consortium? <laughs> <laughs> Rich Manet. <laughs> I think he's Spanish. <laughs> but what, what about Edgeley Park then? Because, I mean, the, the, all the talk is that this guy might be a property developer or something, which does make you feel a bit uneasy for a second. You mean. So if, if a new owner was to come in and say, right, we're off some price for you, we're off. We're off somewhere else. To be honest, I. I see that as progress. I don't. I, I I love Edgeley Park, but but it depends where for me though. I mean, yeah, a new, a new stadium would be progress. Why would it be one extra bus? If they're put, <laughs> no, if they're put it on some industrial estate it's on the funny, outside I, of town. I think we're te- we, I think we're ten years too late with that because yeah. ten years ago there was so much land available. Mm. They, they, they stuck a parking ride in Hazel Grove near where I live. That was that was a, a well, yeah. they used to have a stadium there. It was a Greyhound Stadium oh, yeah, uh, yeah. back in the fifties uh, and forties. <laughs> uh, there was Bridge Hall. I don't know if that land's still available no, because they've got like, houses, exactly. yeah, houses now. And everyone says, "Oh, it's got to be." And Bridge Hall was literally if you, if you put a path and then a, a, a footbridge over the over the uh, railway, the, the the site of Bridge Hall was actually very very close to Edgeley Park. Yeah. People don't realise that would be quite palatable. Was. I think it's not yeah. a question of going down Edgeley Road, turning left at Morrison's, and having to step all the way up there. No, it's, it's you, really you, close you geographically. You go over the Monkey Bridge. The Monkey Bridge, yeah. that's right. Yeah, Bridge Hall yeah. was my primary school. Oh, oh, cool. yeah. I think I've been over that many times. Yeah. So, but, but where else is there? I mean, motorway corridor possibly down by the pyramid, that kind of area. I, mean, I, I did see someone on the elbow mention Aldley Edge, which would be a massive. <laughs> oh, no, oh no. what are you saying? Well, yeah, sign me up. <laughs> <laughs> Season ticket number one. It's not no, four buses, no I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure there are other sites available. Surely, I know. I know we probably can't name them now, but if you look at Google Maps, I'm sure there's some Again, somewhere. Again, the, the site near Tesco. That's all been built on with the storage mm. depot and. I mean, there's a place where they have the fair next to Tesco. I don't think it's big enough for a ground. No, it was Porsche. Porsche moved in. They're building a Porsche. um, Right. Thing you know. So that's what I'm saying. Ten years ago, all this land was available, and you know, people were interested. Uh, Booth Street was available. That's gone now. And people are talking today. And I saw on the message board about, oh, we can buy it back. No, we can't. Stop at homes. Yes, it's the council that currently on the ground, and the council have pledged to support us, and they will be supporting us, and they can be forced to support us in certain circumstances. But Stockport Homes is a separate entity, needs to house people, they will be putting houses on Booth yeah. Street, that's gone. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see, I mean, obviously it's all hypothetical, <laughs> what we're talking, but it'd be interesting to see what they do if, if if they do stay at Edgeley Park or leave. Personally, I think it's progress if we leave, but if he wants to stay and do it up, that's also progress. I, I prefer that, personally, because I think there's potential for that. There's a way of doing it up as well. I mean, I mean, I, I remember when we did the fanzine, um, when I first started, I went down looking at the plans that Elwood had in place. For the second tier on the pop side, mm. and um, there's a way of doing it. If you look at the um, the ground on Google Maps from above, the reservoirs actually impinge on quite a lot of. So you couldn't literally go back um, as a square from the pop side because the reservoir cuts into one side. Yeah. So you'd have to go a bit of a, a wedge. Bit like, like a side. Southampton. Yeah, exactly. Of, yeah. But you could easily get a second tier on the pop side. You could carry it round. It'd be narrow, but you could get a second tier, sort of Brentford style second yeah. tier um, on the railway end. Extend the the main stand. 
and you could get to 15, 16,000. But who's, who's going to sit in them? Because we're getting 3,300, 3,500, aren't we? Well, I'd, I'd, say, I'd say we're getting closer to 4,000 average now, I think. Yeah. Over, yeah. over the last 12 months or so, it's been closer to 4,000, yeah, but yeah, still. Granted, yeah. I think yeah. the caveat we should put in is that, yeah, with, with success. Yeah, yeah. of course. Because right. what, does the, what, does, what does any pre-season new owner want? Because if they just want to make money off the back of the club, how are they going to do that? Unless mm. they develop the club into a championship club, which is, we've been there, we know we've been there, we've got the potential to be there, at which point 10,000 wasn't enough for us, we were selling out in the championship days and 15 is probably a reasonable thing yeah. if they're just thinking well I'm a local lad <laughs> I don't know who it is but th- th- this talk of local people I'm a local lad I just like the fun of it I've got a bit of money I'll clear the debts and we'll just see how it goes that's that's fine we could stay in Esby Park as we are because we're not going to need more than that maybe chuck some steep seats in the railway and maybe a cheap roof and, and you've got enough there I like Plymouth have done something they've got the old facade from there what used to be their equivalent of the main stand basically yeah. and they've built around it yeah, if you, uh, that's like their cl- the entrance to the club shop now, and then they built a stand. And, mm. Yeah, which right. we could easily do. Yeah. There's a lot of land either side of the main stand that's just currently used for not very much at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it all depends. It goes back as well to something that um, Paul Kershaw used to say, guy known as Blue Hippie on the message yeah, yeah. boards. Yeah, no he problem. once he once said something really, really fairly profound, and I, I've sort of based everything on that since. He said, whenever someone comes in to take over a football club, what you need to find out, if you possibly can, and you can ask them, they probably won't tell you, but if you can force it out of them. What's your exit plan? Yeah. It always is, what's your exit plan? What was Elwood's exit plan? Uh, what was Kennedy's exit plan? If we'd have known those at the start of their reigns, things might have gone, we would, we would have viewed them differently. Things might not have turned out differently, but we'd have viewed them differently. Yeah. Um, yeah, that other owners, the trust, I mean, didn't have an exit plan because it didn't mean to exit and it would have would have stayed owners forever if we hadn't have been kicked over as we, as we found out in the Dark Days episode one. As much as we loathe to talk politics on here, obviously with the election coming in a month's time, do we think that could change the situation with Edgeley Park, with the council? Do we think that could change anything? We could do with John Curtis here. It's not, it's not a local election. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Swingometer, you remember. <laughs> Ask your parents. Um, but it's, it's, not, it's a national election, so it probably next April will be more, yeah. more the, the local election. Oh, we'll be in a football league, fine, it won't matter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I do think the council finally uh, realise that they've got an asset in county and they need yeah. to help us. Yeah. And they're happy to let us pay the rent we were paying to um, Cheshire Sport. And they'll they'll own the ground. Who maintains it? I don't know. That's probably up in the air at the moment. It's, we're just ticking along with that arrangement. I'm pretty sure the council would be happy to sell it to somebody yeah. if that somebody was going to offer a better future for county. Or even if, as Russ says, it might be at a different place, and he, yeah. as part of the deal, gets actually part to build houses on, frees up money, and gets a, you know a grant or whatever to to, to build a ground somewhere. Where that'll be, I don't know. But as long as it doesn't look like York's new ground. Have you seen that? Have you, have you seen it? Uh, might have done, yeah. I can't it's just got different different coloured seats all splattered about everywhere. It just looks a mess. Oh, oh right. Contro- controversy, controversy. How do you pronounce it? Yeah, I yeah. love different coloured seats. I think, do you? I think, w- w- I remember going on about main list this a few years ago, and um, it's when they started doing it in cricket grounds. I know, I'm a Tory, I watch cricket. <laughs> 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 if you all <were> you. <laughs> and it basically makes the ground not look as empty as clear blocks of colour do and I just think the clear blocks of colour they fade I mean, Sunderland's ground looks, looks shit now they pink seats there now um, and picking out letters it's just so tacky and 90s I can see where he's coming from with that if you have a different coloured seat and it looks like a crowd so you can have a stand that, that is literally a third full and it actually looks full, yeah. and and you know, I think it's better. But there's a debate. Yeah. Rather than tell us what you think. We're never we're never gonna get in, input from listeners, do we? But no, tell us what, what t- tell us what you think. I'd, lo- I'd love the listeners to let us know what they, what they want from a change of ownership as well. Mm-hmm. I did see someone on Yellow Board today. I'm not going to embarrass them by saying the name, but the the you know that Glenn Tamplin who was at oh Billy god Rick, yeah he's Rumpton, taken Rumpton. over some poor bastards yeah and uh, he said oh I, I wish he could have taken over us. Really, not a hint of irony here. This isn't a line, but oh. he's genuinely, yeah. But you'll get that. It's only Evans could come back, and people oh. will be chanting his name. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Do, do you remember the f- that live game? I think we mentioned it before. Um, first game in non-league. Green, yeah. 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 yeah, they were chanting. What was the ch- was that Evans? Yeah, it was Evans. He did the music. He was there from the pitch. Yeah, it was full on Michael Knight at our level. <laughs> it was Michael Knight juggling the ball and t- kicking it into the stretch for end. He was getting cheered by all by yeah. the fans at Old Trafford. Yeah. It's, it, it makes me despair, you know. Treat any new owner with suspicion until you can, they can convince you that they're legit, and then I find out what their exit plan is. I've got to say, I didn't actually want to talk about the takeover 
Well, no, I mean, I know, but I know we have, and I suppose we should. I suppose we should. Do. I mean, we've not talked about the rumours really because we don't. We, 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 we know that's as much as anyone else, really. Yeah, it's um, just conjecture, isn't it? But it, I, yeah, I, I do think there is something to it this time. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I've heard these rumours in the past, but yeah, I don't. I've not heard much about it, which is which is strange to be honest, because usually people in the know do know about it but yeah it's just been a little comments I'm in the know but people I know are in the know yeah. <laughs> I'm not in the know well apparently he rocked up in a Ferrari at the weekend I don't know, I don't know how true that was with, yeah with his with his private plate yeah. apparently yeah. that's what yeah but again it's just fucking Chinese whispers isn't it it's... no he's not Chinese <laughs> <laughs> how do you know <laughs> probably <laughs> not I told you no the Chinese are still in the picture apparently I've been told yeah there's, there's <laughs> <some> <laughs> That's a bit tacky though, isn't it? Turn up, turn up in a Ferrari. If you are the new owner, have a word for yourself. Yeah, yeah, he's got. I'd turn up on the bus, mate. <laughs> it's like, slum it. Slum it with a skunk. With your bus ticket, like, you've got a Christian Gross did. Do you remember that? It's my yeah. ticket. It's my ticket. I was sure looking at him going, what? What could I have done here? You're fired. Um, so back back to the to the league then and and, and the, the performances. It was the cup defeat that was most disappointing for me. If it'd been FA Trophy, I wouldn't have been asked. But FA Cup, something stings about going out of the FA Cup, especially to a team. Yeah, but then they lose well, the next round. Well, yeah, they lose Walsh in the next yeah. round, didn't they? And not only that, I watched it. I watched it in here actually, um, and the the commentators made a big thing about them being full time, mm-hmm. but nothing about us being part time. Do you know what I mean? And they were, they, you know, they were just going about on about us being the higher division team, and a lower division team beating a higher division team, and then being full time. Nothing about us being part time. There was, they did mention at one point, just I think it was over half time. They mentioned about us being part time in, oh, okay. in, in like a mainly full time league, and they were talking as like, yeah, so it was weird. Yeah. So yeah, I was disappointed as well, but it wasn't a shock, was it? It wasn't, it wasn't an FA Cup shock. I was disappointed because I was there. <laughs> oh, you were in yeah, yeah. New York and uh, went to the game. Could be freezing, stood behind the goal. I've paused the telly. There's a big freeze frame of the, of the when they're attacking our goal. There's a picture of me on the end stanchion, looking as pissed off as you like. As you like, <laughs> and I thought, yeah, that was the. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so apart from that, since the five defeats in a row, then we come to the the, the pretty decent spell we've had since then. Apart from the Woking match, and Mullins, Ferenc Puskas Award nominated I mean, goal. It should be. It, that's got to win goal of the season. I can't believe we actually had a goal a month this this month. He's <laughs> actually had, know, yeah. and just had that in the middle. Of, like, all, all bets are off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And everyone yeah. was taking the piss the month before when they did a goal of the month when we'd always scored like one, one. Yeah, three off. Two <laughs> three, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> can't win either way, can you? <laughs> but it, Sam Byrne did mention when he was doing co-commentary with John a few games ago. He did, it is almost like we've got two halves of a striker. So like what what Frank's good at is what Niall struggles with, yeah. and vice versa. And it, yeah. it does seem to be that one of the strikers will have a go against the defence for an hour or so, get taken off, and then someone else will come on, have a good half hour, start the next week, and then it just seems to yeah yeah no one ever gets settled. Does no, it? that's it. Not like last season where, for the most part, Mulhern was first choice, and then there was a spell halfway through the season where Bell yeah, what's happened to Pickett? He went, went back, in, back. He got injured, didn't he? He was playing for Wigan's under twenty threes while he was on loan with us. Right, and got injured. And got injured. Uh, okay. So I think he's gone back, yeah. Right. Um Well I here's an interesting story. Well, I, I think it's interesting. I was at my son's parents' evening and his PE teacher used to teach Niall Bell, because Niall Bell's from Brunnington or yeah, Reddish, yeah. I think. Um and he was I said, he said to him, Oh yeah, I'm a county fan and he's like, Oh brilliant and he talked to me about Niall Bell and he said he's he's one of those confidence players. You need to put you need, you need to put your arm around him, tell him he's doing well, and he'll play well for you. And I'm just thinking to myself, that ain't Jim Gannon, is it? Jim Gannon's going to go. I need you to do a job. Can you go and do it? But I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I I, th- I think Jim's got a bit of that. I think he's he's mellowed now. I think he's. Do you think, do you think he pays his sky? Do you think he pays his sky? Well, sky I don't that far. <laughs> he's got Cody box, mate. <laughs> um, but no, some of the performances he got out of Niall last season, like after Niall had been on a run, a run of poor form, and then he pulled the performance out. So I, th- I think it's in there, and yeah. I, think, I think Jim can get it out of him. Yeah. But just but he, sh- he showed flashes this season. He, yeah. get, he gets he gets absolutely slated by the, like the people around me at the top of the Cheedland. Absolutely slated. Yeah. And he I always gets called. Like, it's weird how you only hear black players described as lazy, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny that, isn't it? Because yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. him and Darren Stevenson are the only two players I've heard described as lazy in about four or five years. Yeah. And that's not coincidence. Well, the one before that was probably Ricky Lambert. All the years ago. 
<laughs> it's, a bullshit, it's a bullshit insult anyway. I mean, yeah. lazy. The, 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 a, they're fitter than you'll ever be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fat, they just throw their gravy there, mate. And they're fucking and lazy. And B, you know, it, it's a perception you get from somebody not doing what you think they should be doing or not doing what the manager should do. Oh, you're lazy. You know, they're not bloody lazy. They might be you know, mentally not there or, yeah. or they might not be as talented as other people. I'm pretty sure no one goes on the football pitch in, in, a, in a high tempo game like you, you're saying. I think I'm just going to cruise this. I'm just going to no. wander around. I think I think it's just the type of player. I think people expect that um, you've got. You're, you're, I'm trying to think of a good example. Um, like Jordan Henderson type of player, or yeah. you know, a really tenacious uh, Gattuso. Really, yeah. just, they just want that all the time from every They're single. Just running player. around yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. people, you know, in newsflash, people are different, aren't yeah. they? So you don't get it from every player. Yeah, you know. They bring, they bring their used own. to be called lazy, didn't they? Christ, I'm yeah. 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 Like it, it? exactly. Yeah. I used to do that when, when we used to have football trials at school. I'd like, I'd make sure every time I ran past the teacher, I'd be like, and <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> then they'd get picked. Is that why you promised you got asthma? <laughs> <laughs> ah, <Oxford. laughs> <I'm backfired. laughs> um, But then, I mean, just just to close this bit off, unless unless we want to talk about anything else in terms of results and how we're doing, the Dagenham win on Saturday, it could have been more. I mean, we at the yeah. bar. Um, how Frank Mulhern missed that open goal, I'll never know. But you know, it, it could have been more. So it, it's, it's it's like um, peaks and troughs this season. Yeah. I think we'll finish mid table, which I think was what to be expected. Like going go, going into a new league with a developing team. Yes, that's exactly what Jim said last time we were in the conference, and then paid with his job for no discernible reason. Yeah. So yeah, it's gonna it's gonna happen. But yeah, we'll be safe. There's, I don't think we're going to be anywhere near relegation. I, I think we'll be closer to the top than the bottom. Yeah, and I think I think that trust that he had in the players that got us up. I think he's I think he's let them have a go now. <laughs> it's not like a child's game, yeah. <laughs> but he's <laughs> yeah yeah. I think I think he knows which players yeah. will step up. So in January we might see exactly yeah. Why is I, there, why is there a thingy in this? Well no, but that's that's when. Oh, when the, the window the fo- opens the for the higher league, league ah, right, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he, so he can get players in from the football of league. Of course, yeah, yeah. Sorry, but it'll be easier to offload players now because the title winners. Yeah, they, they've won a conference north title. These players, so yeah. there's going to be someone who will want them. We I mean, look at the players we signed when we were at that level. Yeah, yeah, like absolutely. Players who won the title and end up being shit. It's worth pointing out. <laughs> just looking at the table, we, we're three po- three games away from literally the halfway point. Played twenty. It's a forty-six, forty-six game. Forty-six. Lead, isn't it? Yeah, forty-six. Yeah, so it's three more games, we'll be halfway. So. Yeah, you 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 can't see us plummeting from thirteenth if we, if we're still there in three games to the bottom four or whatever it is, bottom three. How many go down? Yeah, four. 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 But it depends four. on if anyone goes bankrupt. Yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. 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 But equally, you know, like like I've said a couple of times, six points off playoffs, a couple of wins, might be three points off playoffs, two points off playoffs. You never know. Won't it be three going down? What with Berry? Have they decided? Is it, it a big? No, it's going one going down from the. Right. It's one going down from the league too, isn't it? Oh, my girlfriend's dad will be happy. That's going to put fans. Uh, he'll be delighted. <laughs> well, he might not be Just happy. Just as long as they're not the one. <laughs> what it is, Andy Burnham, <laughs> Andy Burnham's told me, Berry have been reprieved, being put back in, and they've been in the average points that they would have had at that point. So they'll probably end up 10th in League 2 by Christmas. And they get put back in. <laughs> I just want to Berry fans, that's what they are. <laughs> is that what they're talking about? They have won the FA Cup, though, to be fair, so yeah, well, it's caught them a bit of slack. Yeah, so. okay, because they won it, they should have a reprieve, yeah. Well, Oldham are ne- I think Oldham are, Oldham are going to be next, aren't they? And Mac as well. You know, Matt, oh God, Mac as well. But yeah. this happens every year with Mac, around November, December, oh, we can't pay our wages, and then January, they get a big cup tie. Well, <laughs> yeah. they played the kids in the cup and got gubbed Gub, on yeah, it, yeah, so yeah, that's not, that's what's going to happen this year? Not so lucky this time. Um, okay, anything more about like the matches or any players, anyone caught your eye, any tactics that you think he's been playing or anything like I, that? How do you feel about Garrett at left back? I think he looks he? good, yeah. 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 yeah, you can tell he's a football league player, can't you? Yeah, and you can tell he's left footed for a left back yeah, as well. That's nice, isn't it? <laughs> I know. Yeah. And since then we have tightened up down that flank as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I tell you what, in the Dagenham match actually, um, Keane went into midfield. Yeah. Because he, dro- yeah. he, dro- he dropped. Um, Walker and Turnbull, didn't he? Yes. And Keane, he was he was for me. He was my man of the match. He was quality there last season, and I think now Festus Arthur. Festus Arthur oh yeah, he's quite. He's just, quite I, I don't. There's people. Someone on the other board saying, "Oh, I don't get the loving." It's like it's not, no one's having a loving. <laughs> Everyone's just, just happy to have a young player. Yeah. And we've got a manager whose biggest strength is coaching young players. So what's not to enjoy about that? Yeah. But, oh, 
Oh, well, he's not Beckenbauer. No one said he was. <laughs> no point did anyone say he was Beckenbauer. It's just he's 18 and he's more than capable. Yeah. Get him signed up to a contract and it'll be big money for us. He's a big unit as well, isn't he? Yeah, he's not getting he's 18 as well, isn't he? Yeah, and he's good with his feet. He uh, just looks really good. And I, I think a few people said it, but he's, he's better than Ashley Williams was at that age. I think he's a lot more advanced than Ashley Williams was at 17, 18. Yeah, well, when he puts one in from 35 yards away at Rochdale, I might believe it. Maybe. I'll have to play him first. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it to the dizzy height. Do you know I give my right arm to be to play away at Rochdale? You know, in, in a in a dream big mate. In, in, no, honestly, <laughs> no, I know what you mean. In though, a mid-table yeah. League Two match, I just that that yeah. game, you know, I think I might, I think I might cry if we go up again. <laughs> to be honest, if we two. were back in the league next season, would you, would you go to the? Uh, I don't even know what the trophy's called now. The Auto Win Screen Shield LDV. They just call it trade. Just oh, call it the football league the, trophy now, don't yeah. they? Yeah, they play the reserves of the Premier. Yeah, league. yeah. would you go to that first season just because it's yeah, new again? Of course, yeah. yeah, yeah, probably. You wouldn't. No. No. I don't Depends who they play, you know. I would not go and see bloody Chelsea's under 21s or whatever. I don't go to them on Football Manager, so I'm not going to go to them in real life. That's great, that. Do you know what I do every now and again a Football Manager? I'm the manager of Spurs at the minute because I've worked my way up from County. But yeah. every now and again I go and watch County. Just, just, oh, watch, yeah. just watch a match. Yeah. And then he says. I was spotted in the stands on my days off I like to go and watch my uh, hometown club I oh, know I used to get the because I was at um, I took Portsmouth up from League 2 to the Premiership and we were in the Champions League and everything and then I, yeah, I went to watch County who was still languishing in Conference North went to watch him and they said oh he's making a play for the job so whoa, oh, I went to Portsmouth from the Champions League Real Madrid away on Tuesday night you really <laughs> think I'm going to jeopardise that that's a great as a Tory whenever I'm down in London and I find myself short of quail's eggs I head down to Covent Garden to replenish my stock and if I want eggs in Stockport, I head to at Covent Garden. 94 Lower Hillgate, in the heart of Stockport Old Town. Come and visit at Covent Garden for quality breakfast and lunch, fantastic coffee, cakes, light snacks, and above all, a friendly place with great service. Open match days. Uh, okay, uh, what I wanted to speak about actually is the, um, the match day experience at Edgley Park and how that's improved. The music significantly. I'm, I'm very much enjoying the music before the games. Well, music is on the agenda. So. The music is done by Rick Hinks now. Yeah. Uh, who's the he's the stadium maintenance guy. Yeah. He's, he's, he's probably got a better title than that. So sorry, Rick. Yeah. 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 Probably a bit more. A, formal a title than befitting that. how important he actually is. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he started to take over the music, and I got in contact. Said, "Can we can we chip some songs in?" And he, he went, "Absolutely, of course you can." So we've sent you some songs, and he's played them. Yeah, cool. So we're contributing now to. The music that you hear at Edgley Park. No, we're contributing to the match experience. Bro. Well, that's it. Yeah, that's sorry, we are. Yeah, yeah. yeah, of course we are. <laughs> <laughs> I, I undersell everything all the time. Don't, <laughs> I? don't give yourself enough credit. Um, so that's good. And then, um, I mean, the screens in the concourse that stream that's, the line that's match. Big, now. That. I, I mean, I've not got to uh, sample it yet, but next home game, I'll be at war. Yeah, you're going to be going to the bar early at yeah. half time and watch, watch well, the I don't normally go in that bar. I go in the bar with the carpet in there. Oh dear! Well, they'll love it in there, won't they? They've got TVs I in there. Of course, they will. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that's the one where you can order your drink before the game. I used to be able to. I don't know if you still yeah, can. Yeah, yeah. It should be like the Royal Oak, where there's a TV everywhere. There's a t- when you sat down on the bog having a shit. There's a TV <laughs> right in front of your face. Yeah. <laughs> um, will the big screen be showing replays as well? Right well, the next thing. Well, it? that was going to talk about that. The scoreboard has got to be the best edition, hasn't it? Yeah. That's quality. Um, so I read the court notes a few weeks ago but it basically said how much they paid for it which is which is fine which was a bargain yeah they went to pay for the um oh, the insulation, insulation only didn't pioneer we? yeah yeah but they said they said it can it's capable of doing a lot more than yeah. it, than we're using it for well they, they, they shown film on it i was at a game where they showed footage yeah they yeah. Show, yeah yeah they showed goals of the previous match so it's just a oh, question yeah. of being able to, yeah it's just a question of, well it can it's a, it's a tv effectively it's not, yeah, just, yeah. not just graphics who's gonna be the first one to hack it and put some porn on there <laughs> <Porn up. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> well, the, um, for the minute of silence, the poppies were falling, weren't they? So they can do. Oh, cool. Yeah, so it was really, really good that they can. Yeah, but basically, my point is, they might be able to do replays eventually. Of the I'm sure they can. It's just a question of being able to get the the know know how and where they'll to to do the quick edit and get it up there. Yeah, get um, someone to which, do it exactly, and and that might mean more equipment up on the gantry. Yeah, and more experience and knowledge up on the gantry. But what they what they've shown is that the the, the scoreboard can cope with it. Yeah. All you need to do is send it that feed. So yeah. yeah. Replays are definitely a possibility. I can't wait for the first time they accidentally play one during the match and everyone's just tapping the ref on the shoulder like, look. (laughs) (laughs) It is good though, isn't it? I like it. I like it. Where's it from? from Uh, Pioneer. Our sponsors. Don't even sell pies. No, was it not? 
Some another ground somewhere. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah it was from our old traffic cricket ground. It was. It was. Yeah, oh, was it? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's. I've, I've heard people say uh, you, so the rumours go around all the time, going, "Oh, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's an old one. It's broke. That's why they got rid of it." And I'm thinking, why, why are you saying stuff like that? It's clearly, it's not broke, or it's it's reconditioned because it's, it's working. Well, they don't want it because they've bought a bigger one, probably. Probably. But it doesn't yeah. mean it wasn't in use until the point at which they said, "We don't need this anymore." Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we should have got to skip it instead, couldn't we? Yeah, oh, no, yeah. We, don't, we don't want your yeah. cast off. Leave it at the bottom of your drive. Yeah, we, we, want, we want brand new, we're county, we want brand new. Yeah, Yeah. go to Bright House, you can get it. <laughs> 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 you might have to squint a bit, but you can pull that up as well, and you'd have a guarantee. But these are the same people complaining that help, someone was complaining that help the Hatters have bought the frog. You know, the, the frog. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. They've, they've, they've bought, Count the Hatters have bought, it's like, well, how's that helping the Hatters? It's like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> you don't deserve a club. <laughs> Where is the frog, though? It's outside the club shop. Oh, is that where it's, 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 it's yeah, yeah, it is? Well, yeah. when they announced that they bought it, which is which is fantastic, by the way. The new owner's got it on top of his Ferrari now. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like it's like the Jaguar thing, but massive. <laughs> I th- when the way they described where it was going, I thought it was going to go inside the cheese. <laughs> <Like>, up front. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, Topping in, in, inside the cheese land, in that little gap, you know, the little gap as you just go in. Yeah, and, yeah. And you can watch. Down. I thought, I thought, yeah, I thought the program thought. stall isn't that. Yeah, that's yeah. why I thought they were going to put it. But, yeah. Um, yeah, obviously. But no, there's, there's a picture on Facebook of it outside the club shop. So. No, I, I think it was there on Saturday. I, I yeah. saw it. So it's it's there. Yeah, Stop, he's not asking for trouble for vandalism because inside the ground it'd be safe from people pissing around. With I mean, it's already been written on, though, isn't it? So I suppose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's got the county stuff on it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because don't, don't the gates close at night? Look, yeah, that's true. If they're going to get over in that, they're going to get in the ground, aren't they, as well, I suppose. Should we nick a load of gear from the shop, lads, or should we just. Draw a cock on this. <laughs> Just vandalise a frog. Yeah, I, I want to go nick some Love Island water bottles. <laughs> Love Island water bottles. Love Island sti- well, Love Island style water bottles I've got in the county. Love shop. Island style. I water think it means it comes with three doses of chlamydia. <laughs> Although, <laughs> having said that, the retail's getting better as well now. Petchy's top. Petchy's on top, on top of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah some good stuff. Yeah. Um, my, my sister's delighted because they've got little baby kits now. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, the nephew's getting sorted. It's not by my <laughs> one, I'm not I'm buying my own. I've got to say, though. Um, a little like brandy tumbler with a county crest on twenty quid. I think that's a bit over the top. It's that it's that thing about football fans. The football merch. It's like you know, we'll get a product that sells at X amount and we'll just double it because it's a football thing. We'll put a badge on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, yeah, it's, it's difficult to know because whether you'd sell by having the price, would you sell twice as many? You probably wouldn't. No. So you've got to maximise the revenue, haven't you? I mean, what do we think to the retro shirts that came out? I what thought they were they were all right, but yeah. the, only reason, the only reason why I didn't buy any was because with the joke they were Joma. I want yeah, to get I, a retro shirt. I'd try and get. I wouldn't mind picking up one of the red ones, to be honest. Yeah. But yeah, the other two, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I could take a leave really. I'm still waiting for some someone to do a proper replica of the Argentina one, because obviously it was tried when we were, when we had the Umbro kits. They tried it, but yeah, well, that's, wasn't quite the same. Yeah, well, they had the um, the other one as well, didn't they? The one that was in that um, Great Day Out. The guy, the guy had. A, had a, yeah, yeah. Mm. Had yeah, had they had a t-shirt, and they did a load of them, didn't they, in the club shop? But yeah. I, that, it, would that not fit what you want? Or? No, it wasn't quite. It, it's, you you it's, mean the, the proper the proper Argentina? No, yeah, the, yeah, the, the actual neck and everything, right, and the stripes. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I think it's only about there's only about four stripes on the front of the shirt, really, the thick stripes. Hmm. You want to go to Tufts, the old fashioned football? Yes, yeah, the old fashioned football. I'll shirt just wait company. for Ben Walker to come across another one. Ben Walker, that's it. I'm sure we'll get older. Yeah, we forgot his name earlier. We were talking about county ladies. Should we go on to that? Yeah, what's been going on? Um, so for those that don't know, I'm the Stockport County Ladies uh, League Goalkeeping Coach. Um, and we've had we've had a pretty we had a pretty bad start to be fair. Mm. Um, so just for, just for information, I will retweet all county ladies stuff as well. Um, proper setup, we're in a proper league. We got beat by Leeds United on, on Sunday. Oh, like the good old days. <laughs> oh well yeah. No. Um, but the, the the disparity, is that's the right word? Uh, between Leeds United setup and ours, was, oh, was immense. Yeah. It was our home match. They brought fans. I'm not joking. Because wow. we now we're in this league. We we have to have a turnstile. We have to have a stand. Yeah. We have refereeing lines. But it's all it's all proper. They brought fans that paid to come in the turnstile. They brought three lads doing their media. So there's a cameraman. There's a guy doing Twitter. And there was another guy. I don't know what he was doing, but he stood around doing stuff, taking photos and shit. Um, and all their all their lot were kitted top to toe in all the gear. Yeah. And ours. We've got the we've got the kits from County, which is much appreciated, or you know, the home and away kits. But apart from that, we don't get a lot. So um, it's it's amazing that we're even in this division to be honest, and we've really found the step up quite quite difficult. So we had a bad start, um, won in the cup, 
beat Bradford away as well, which was a good result. Bradford City. So it's all the, you know, it's all the yeah, proper yeah, things, yeah. you know. Because um, I think I think people you know don't think it's uh, it's proper at times, but it's a really good standard if, if you if you get down there and watch it. Um, and then since then we 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 went six unbeaten, and then obviously fell to uh, fell to Leeds United on on Sunday. So near the bottom of the table, it's going to be a scrap to stay up. Um, but we think we'll just about manage it. We've got some players coming back. We've got a, a girl, forget her first name, but her surname's Connor from the Connor. I see another one. Another one. Yeah. So she's yeah. a she's a Jack Connor's granddaughter. Right. Um, obviously, Joe. I don't think it's Joe Connor's sister. I think it's Joe Connor's sister. Not Joe. Yeah, Joe Connor. Wasn't Joe it? Connor plays for us. Yeah. yeah. It's just I know his I know his brother um, as well. So yeah, so she she's coming back because so we're getting these players back from injury now. So hopefully we should uh, make a stand to stay up. Cracking. When yeah. do they play? If you want to go down and watch. Uh, Sundays at two o'clock, um, and we, our website is linked to the uh, the county website. So if you go onto the teams menu of counties website, see the ladies, and all of our stuff is there. Um, but yeah, it's good stuff. Um, but yeah, it's just a really good experience. Well, while we're talking of uh, County's website, do you remember all the fuss there was a couple of years ago when they were moving over to the new one? Yeah. Mm. Do you remember? No, no one mentions it now. No one mentions the website at all now, did it? No, because it's been run well, isn't it? I suppose so, yeah. But I, I, I can't remember the last time I went on there. Yeah, it's, it's, I it's, go on it's, Yellow it's more a move to time. social media, I think. Yeah. Moving away from websites. Most people will be on Twitter for County News. That's yeah, they will be. But, do, I, I, but I, ch- I check it every day. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I have my lunch at 12 every day at the same lunch every day <laughs> and I check County's website you're a creature out of it aren't you every day, yes. um, I do exactly the same I call it dinner though like you should even from around it not lunch well though, well, lunch. Should, I've got mm. do you know what I, I do call it dinner but because I have to call it lunch because of the people that I'm around generally usually <laughs> Tories <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah I, I go on it every day and I check but I, I, that's kind of where I, I get the official news from obviously if I see it come through Twitter I, I, I find that Sometimes he posts things on Twitter first, but it hasn't got the article to link it. Mm. Um, but it'll be on the website if it's official and it's being announced, mm. like a statement from the club, a uh, board statement. That'll be on. That'll be on the site first, won't it? All right, home game coming up. Where are we going? What's your pre-match plan? Usually Bobby Peel for me. Peel. What about you, Dave? Well, we've already established I'm a Tory, so I'll just bring G and C from home and drink it in the back of the car. What about you? I mean, I'm, where are you going, Bobby Peel? Yeah, yeah. How many tellies have we got? Fine. <laughs> oh, mate, mate, you're not going to believe this. You want to get down to the Royal Oak. Why? What's so good about the Royal Oak? We've got tellies, they've got big tellies, they've got small tellies, they've got tellies when you're ordering a drink, they've got tellies when you're having a piss, they've got tellies when you're having a stick outside. Tellies, tellies, tellies! Aside from that, it's a really good place to go before the match, and alcohol is also available. Uh, oh, the Horsefield podcast. It's, it's just oddball behaviour. It's, it's weird. Just. It's weird. That, that, that I think I, I sort of put something on Twitter or whatever that he seems to. Take massive pride and relish in proving he was such a dick. Yeah, showing how ins- insubordinate he was. Yeah, yeah. 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 And he says, you know, this this happened and this happened and this happened. Okay, fair enough. And then he was told to stay away from the club, and then he comes back because he's been advised to by his legal team or whatever, and he just sits there on the desk swinging his legs, saying, "I earned him," as he goes past. I thought, you yeah. child, yeah. you you absolute at, child. At no point did I listen to that and think, oh, that's just, you're not bad. But it's it seems to be like any podcast that features ex ex players. <laughs> there seems to be a lot of that type of behaviour. Yeah. yeah. And the only one that kind of books to join the Peter Crouch podcast. Mm. He actually seems genuinely like, but anything else I've listened to with ex players, I think, especially non league ones and lower leagues. Yeah. You're a dickhead. Well they just they just sound laddy to me. Yeah. It's like uh, you, you've, got, you've got to have a sleeve tattoo. Yeah. You know. Go to Maga at the end of the yeah, season. Yeah, wave wave a wave a, a copy of nuts at, at a bus <laughs> going past and that. It just it, that's what it feels like, and it, I, I listened to a bit of the um, I Had Trials once, which is apparently one of the better ones. I prefer that. Uh, yeah, the and yeah, I listened yeah. to um, I think I listened to the bit of the Gary Stockford one to be honest, mm. and it was all right. But I just thought, it, yeah. I mean, obviously, we're not comparing our podcast with any of theirs. Uh, we're not saying we're great or anything, but it just yeah, they just seem a bit dickish, don't they? Yeah, all lads, lads at the bar, lads, 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 lads. There's, there's people in the background else. sniggering on the video version as well. That. Is on YouTube on, as well. What are the Jeff Horsfield one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, heard, I heard about that, yeah. It's just <laughs> embarrassing. It's just like, oh, we've got a famous person in our podcast and we really have to spend the whole yeah. 45 minutes kissing his ass. Yeah. And I think, to be fair, if we do get Jim on here, that's probably what we'll be like. <laughs> <laughs> but putting that to one side, <laughs> there's a bit too much. Oh, we've got a famous player. Oh, you're really funny, you. Is that what happened? Is that what you did? Oh, you're really funny. You just stood there swinging your legs and saying, hi, Jim. Oh, you little lad. But when all this stuff happened, if he'd been in the Premier League, it had happened with someone like Mourinho or Redknapp or whatever. 
he won't be laughing about it like he is now. So mm. what what gives him the right to think, oh, it's all right to go and take the piss like and just generally be a cunt? Yeah. Excuse my French. Yeah. I know they stopped the podcast then. <laughs> Someone should. <laughs> That's a private joke. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I've not listened to it, and I'm, I'm probably not going to listen to it after what everyone said. I just listened to the first 20 minutes because someone said that's the one they talk about Gannon. Same. Right. Yeah. 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 But it's weird. I mean, what, what, what I find a bit dispiriting is the fact that there's a lot of county fans who just seem to accept that must be what happened. Yeah, they've jumped on it. And, and me, at the, at the very least, I would say that's one half of the story, let's hear the other yeah. half, and then you come to a decision, and they won't agree, and you'll let the truth, the truth will never come out. But you might then be able to form an informed opinion but there's a lot of county fans who have formed an opinion and it's probably the people who just don't like Gannon and we yes. know who they are and they, they, they're doing the woodwork and they keep they keep coming out and they, they have done since he was a player and you just think you've just heard that a thickish pig shit Barnsley bruiser yeah. who's just basically proven what a dick he is by the, the description of his own actions and you're thinking okay you're taking his side against you know a county legend basically Without even hearing that other person's side, I just think have a word with yourselves. Yeah. I mean, if, if I'd been plucked out of doing manual labour to become a professional footballer, I think I'd have a, I'd, I'd kind of recognise how fortunate I was. Yeah, you'd be a bit more grouchy. Shitting on people who I've worked with in that time. Yeah. But obviously, he was there. He was. He was obviously there. I don't know to sort of to peacock a bit, wasn't he? Yeah. To show off a bit. Yeah. And obviously, with the sniggering going on in the background, from what I'm obviously I've not listened to it, so it's just you know. It sounds like he's got a bit lost in himself. Yeah, you're not particularly missing much, mate. It's just just your classic non-league weirdo behaviour, really, which yeah. hopefully will be in the past soon, fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go back in time now to January 1997. Ooh, the Tori days. Amos is at number one in the hit parade. Matilda is the only film doing well at the box, this, box office that I've heard of, so I'll use that one. <laughs> I've just got County Highlights Part 2 on VHS for Christmas. Paedophile and child killer Sidney Cook is still a year off being paroled. Now I'm not sure if either of you have time, either of you lads have time travelled before, but whatever you do, don't touch anything. Princess Diana is our most valuable royal. If anyone, <laughs> if anything happens to her, I'll be livid. <laughs> do you remember the air crash? Do you remember the rag and bone lad? Do you remember putting gravel on your butties? Do you remember having rat for dinner? Do you remember papering your walls with spam? Do you remember what you had for breakfast? The Tea Party section of the County Podcast, proudly sponsored by Memories What Are of Stockport, one of the 73 Stockport-based Facebook groups that are scared to death of modern life. Do you remember when you last saw your trousers? Yes, so um, this is issue 61 we're looking at. Um, One of the most popular covers we did, even though it took bugger all in the way of effort. Although I say that, I think I remember at the time we put this together, we thought, we've got to get our, our... even on the cover and basically if you haven't seen it it's, basically, it's Ian Dowie holding his head in ha- his hands after he's just scored an own, a spectacular own goal probably one of the best own goals you've ever seen at County anyway um, for West Ham was that the winner? was that the second? Was it, it was the equaliser it was the equaliser yeah, yeah. I, I always thought it was a winner for some reason but yeah. just looking back on the little report in there oh, right. it does, yeah, okay, it, yeah, does yeah. it does say yeah it's the equaliser well, no because no, Cavaco Oh no, um, Brett Angel, wasn't it? Brett Angel, Angel, Angel yeah. second yeah. winner, yeah. But the, 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 I can still get the goal. It's funny he took a, f- a throw in in, uh, in front of the pop side, pissing down with rain. Yeah. He throws it in, big long flunny throw, gets it back out to him, and he heads it back in. And then it's flicked on, I think, by Alan Armstrong, or somebody flicks it on. And Dowie just did what he did. Everyone, everyone's seen the goal, and, and you still can't fathom what he must have been trying to trying to achieve but it, it was the type of passage of play that if that, if we saw that now in the whole main stand they'd be like get it down <laughs> <laughs> get it down yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was a good game that obviously. and then obviously for the cover I think I remember did I spent ages thinking what can we do what can we do what, what caption can we put on there and in the end I just, I just went with if you can think of a caption which will make this picture even funnier and feel feel free to draw your own speech bubble and write in because we couldn't and really there is no way of making that picture funnier <laughs> It's Ian Dowie. I mean, it's not even as if it was like some other player who didn't look like Ian Dowie. It's Ian Dowie looking like Ian Dowie. I mean, just scored the most spectacular own goal you're ever likely to It wouldn't to have see. been as good if it was Isle Berkovich or exactly. someone handsome. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or even, um, it was one who scored their goal and had a big bruiser, the fullback, uh, Dix. Dix, yeah. It wouldn't have been funny with him. It was Ian Dowie with Ian Dowie's face. Yeah, looking. yeah. <laughs> yeah, so there's, there's um, I mean, the thing that's, that jumps out from this, obviously, it was, it was the best ever season in terms of. Um, not league finish, obviously, that we finished higher the following season, but in terms of results and achievements and cup runs and everything, it was the best ever season. And uh, this was 
about halfway through. I think by this time we'd, we we knew we were doing something special because we you know we beaten Blackburn to to get the game against West Ham. Uh, we beaten Sheffield United away um, in an earlier round. We hadn't played in the cup yet. Uh, I think we might have played early rounds in the cup, but we haven't played at Stoke in round three. But at this time, I think we were probably top six, top ten in the league. We'd started turning it around and we were playing such amazing football that it wasn't a surprise that we'd got the draw at West Ham and then we beat them in the replay live on telly. I think people forget that in that cup run, the f- we beat Chesterfield in the yeah. first round. Yeah. And it was two yeah. legs then, wasn't two it? Two legs, it was. yeah. Two legs for the first two rounds. So we beat them... We, we beat both. them... Um, Chesterfield in the first round they went on to go to the semi-final of the FA Cup and got giant killers that season yeah. Yeah. with and Kevin I, Davis up front yeah and I, I always that's annoyed me ever since that they got giant killers and yeah. I don't think they had a VAR, a VAR controversy style thing as well they had the ball that went over the line in the semi-final yeah yeah, yeah. who was the player it was the, oh, Tony Lorma May, maybe I don't know but that's the first name that came to mind from them it right. might have been Kevin Davis to be fair yeah I know Ellery changed his story. I remember watching the game because it was live on telly. It's not like him. And yeah, he basically <laughs> changed his story between then and the evening um, when they interviewed him again. And basically, they were cheated out of it. But, I mean, you know, it's David Ellery. He was yeah. expelled. Chris Bowman was playing for them as well, and he crossed, he crossed for their equaliser, I think. Yeah. He was yeah. Playing, and the Old Trafford, they came Old Trafford. But that year, we beat Chesterfield four times. Uh, we, we did the double them in the league, and we won both of the cup games. Did we beat them away? Uh, did we beat them at home as well? Yeah. Or did yeah. we? I, th- I don't think. It's rarely been done. Whether it's ever been done before, a team has beaten and actually beaten another team four four times. I think did we come close one of the last couple of seasons? Didn't we have Altrincham? Yeah, a few times. They just, they just couldn't buy a win against us, could they? <laughs> Alter- and maybe FC United at one point as well. I think we've. But well, that might have been just three in a season. Yeah, I think that that might be the only time we've done. Yeah. But yeah. listeners, if, if you know, yeah, well, know <laughs> we can't be asked. <laughs> <laughs> Not looking back over it. Yeah, so just point some other things out out of the uh, fanzine. Obviously, the covers one of the one of the, uh, the the better covers we've had. One of the best covers. Simply because of the subject matter. Um, what have I highlighted there? I've highlighted page two. Um, can I can I just say something? Yeah, um, it's a bit like an Ian Livingston book, isn't it? The Tea Party at some points. Because <laughs> on one particular, by page thirteen, it says this article's continued on page thirty nine, <laughs> and I'm thinking, why? <laughs> Am I going to die on page thirty nine? That <laughs> go back to page two. I was going to say there's an article on page four that. Um, I've called it former, former Yugoslavia and it's basically an, something I used in, in my book because I obviously wrote the book at the end of this season um, but what happened was with the desktop publishing I, I in, a, in a proper magazine in a, in a professional magazine if you like <laughs> what they do is they'd edit the piece and they'd make it fit the space whereas and maybe resize the font I don't know but what I thought was well I don't, I don't want to edit anything so what I'll do is I'll just continue them where there's a space, where there's a gap. Right. So sometimes it went from page 13 to page 39 <laughs> so with this one. And you can see here, I'm, I'm clearly just trying to fill a gap because this this um, this um, article ends, talking about this this game when we played um, Sarajevo, um, beating 4-2 in a friendly um, back in the 70s. And it says, well, I, I was still a teenager. Hang on. Do you, yeah, it's in brackets at the end. Do you remember this famous game? Were you one of the two blocks involved? Perhaps you were the referee or you were walking along Castle Street the following morning on the way to get your paper. What we're trying to say is write something down for us and send it in. Come on, we need to fill this thing, you know. Perhaps you strip naked on Werner Flow every alternate Tuesday night and howl at the moon. Or you know someone who does. Look, come on, this gibberish will continue until we get more contributions. Perhaps you only remember the Sarajevo game, but you were one of the floodlights. Perhaps you've got a horrible pustulant growth right on the end of your... And I end it there. Yeah. And it's clearly because there's a gap that needs to be filled. <laughs> <laughs> I'll carry on, I'll carry on <laughs> ranting. There's a picture of Leslie Grantham above it. Um, with the tea party this was something that um, Phil Brennan used to do for us because um, you all know Phil he's, he's a consummate uh, networker <laughs> and um, <laughs> he used to I remember one picture he got of Richard E. Grant with the fanzine and uh, he was a fan of Richard E. Grant and he, he brought an autobiography out and Phil was a, a you know literally a fan he wanted to meet him anyway but he thought I've got a fanzine I'll take it down and we've got a photo I, I, must, I must dig it out and put it on uh, Twitter or something of Richard E. Grant holding a copy of the fanzine and we had some really really I bought a fanzine quite, by accident. Quite big stars. I mean, this this um, Leslie. Well, Louis Suarez is one of them. Or is that? Or is that a Photoshop? Oh, he's Bagara book. Yeah. Oh right, no, if that's on. Yeah, I think it was real, like right? yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it would have been. Yeah. Uh, Amy McDonald, who uh, asked your dad, or <laughs> actually granddad, <even. laughs> and uh, Bert Kwok was there. He went, he went, <laughs> I think he went in an official capacity to. Uh, to a, a do which was a, like a big charity do and there's loads of these people there so he took a fanzine and he got them all, all pretending to read the fanzine Jeremy Beadle with his massive <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, 
Was it an A3 fan team? <laughs> <laughs> but they were really useful for filling up gaps. And um, yeah, obviously, I'd started to do at this point what um, basically I saw Brian Moore's head. Um, there's a fanzine called Brian Moore's Head Looks Uncanny Like London Planetarium, which is a Gillingham fanzine. And they did this thing with um, talking of saints who died in that year. There's a picture of Mother Teresa there on page 31. And it wasn't actually made a saint until 2016. I learned that this week. Bit of background for you there. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, another way of filling up these little gaps, which appeared because I didn't want to edit the articles, there's a picture of Frank Skinner on page 23. I just used to cut out people's faces and drop them in um, into, into gaps. <laughs> And another gap, uh, a space filler, which which actually caught on quite well, was um, the tea party around the world. And it was weird that at one point we used to have people who'd be packing for the holiday, and they'd say, "Right, I've got the passports. I've got the money. Have you got the the, the, t- the pills for little Bobby's eczema? Yeah, I've got. All that. I've got the tea party. Oh Christ, we forgot the tea party. Turn the taxi around." And people would take a tea party on holiday with them, and we had them in the San Francisco on Lombard Street, that famous windy street we had, uh, Sydney Opera House. And there's a couple here, there's, there's someone on a, on a, looks like a ferry boat, a Tahoe <laughs> Queen. And at the end, I've actually added, I, I never apologised to this guy, oh, there's someone there in Sacramento, USA, same guy, I think. But s- someone sent one, it's, it's against the same guy at um, Alcatraz, at San Francisco Bay. And I never apologised to him for this, but I should have done, because I basically ruined his, his, his proud picture of the fanzine outside Alcatraz, because I put speech bubbles. And at this point, friend of the podcast and... Uh, Rapist, convicted rapist, Owen Austin. I've <laughs> 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 been convicted of his crimes. So I put speech bubbles coming from in, in the distance from Alcatraz. But I've got a football run to, I tell, football club to when I tell you. Next one says, shut up, Austin, and keep showering. And the third one says, I think you've dropped the soap. <laughs> <laughs> How woke. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah. I should, I was, yeah, I should have apologised to the guy for just messing up his picture with that because he's obviously happy that he's got a picture of the fans in outside uh, Alcatraz on San Francisco Bay. <laughs> on, on page nine, you were selling. Well, it says money to burn. Well, the TTP shirts are unavailable now until the weather gets a bit warmer. But why not treat yourself to a TTP sweatshirt? Yeah. Did they actually? Did you actually make them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, it was Mr. Brennan uh, who who had contacts in the in the t-shirt and sweatshirt printing industry. Is the is an industry like that? Um, I basically lived. I, I slept in one of them for years afterwards till it was basically falling apart. Because they were really good. They were grey sweatshirts, and he printed the, the Mad Hatter logo on the front and Stockport County on it. He also did some, if you remember, Calvin Klein did a series of t shirts with the CK, mm-hmm. quite big. And oh, did he do the Stockport? Stockport, did yeah. Did he do yeah, that? Yeah, the CK in the middle. How yeah. did he get away with that? I've no idea. I always wondered, because when I saw someone, I thought, oh, that's pretty smart, that, but shit. Sure, sure. Well, not that Calvin Klein are going to come knocking on well, little exactly. Stockport County's yeah. door, but. It's, uh, it's probably because we only sold about 30. Yes, <laughs> 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 Phil, really did that, and he, he gave me some freebies for, for doing it, but then, then he, he looked after that. Might get me in charge of our, our merch section. Yeah, section, what do you reckon? I was told at the time I was doing this, people companies used to get in touch and say, let us do t shirts for you because t shirts will sell with football stuff on them. It doesn't matter what it is, it will. Um, I think we disproved it because I don't think we sold many of those. <laughs> film, film. Who's the model? Uh... I have no idea. I have no but, idea. If you want to write in and tell us if that's you or your dad. He does say, uh, NB goatee beardy youths available at extra cost. Call for details. <laughs> 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 Yeah, that was well, we're back up to Sydney Cook again now, aren't we? <laughs> and the other thing that was a space filler was Louis's jokes. Basically, Louis, which I think I mentioned in my book, um, used to tell me, used to call me at away games, and that, in, particularly in this year, and uh, tell his tell his jokes. And some of them are uh, reprinted here. And uh, yeah, <laughs> reading myself, <laughs> they're corny, but, but hilariously so. And uh, yeah, I think. Uh, I reckon we should do a new feature on the podcast where we get listeners to tell us their favourite jokes. And then we'll read them, and then the best one we'll read out on a podcast. Okay. Should we do that? Can do, yeah. Yeah. Sounds <laughs> well. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. So if you've got a good joke, don't write. Don't write into us. We haven't got any addresses. Well, we have, but that's that's old now. Just uh, just message us on Twitter. Don't email in going overboard, because <laughs> one person will do it and it'll be funny. <laughs> and then a deluge of them will just get sick of it, and some poor fucker's got to read them. So. <laughs> So yeah, do that. Get in contact on Facebook or Twitter. That'll be good. Cool. I don't think there's anything else that you guys want to talk about. I was a big fan of the video review of that. Cause yeah, it's, it's funny. You mentioned it in, in, in your, your yeah, intro to this. Yeah, um, yeah I, I used to get these videos from uh, Lol at Cavalier um, and he knew I'd plug them and, and I thought, well, you kind of just plug them. Um, new videos out, there you go, move on. Or you can watch every one and just try and do a humorous commentary on it, which is what I started to do by this point. And uh, yeah, reading it back, it was uh, 
it was you know some of the things were making me laugh and as I say you shouldn't because I wrote it <laughs> but uh, yeah and it, th things I've, I've I'd forgotten but um, on the video after the Brentford game um, Tom Watt who played lofty from EastEnders and became a football I reporter I thought I'd imagine that until I read this before. no he was, he yeah. was interviewed by the I video guys that, yeah. and I remember reading his report in the Observer the next day and um, yeah like I say the, the um, interviewed completely with sunglasses but he calls us County not Stockport even though he would have pronounced it Stockport which I was like yeah. I think if someone calls us County who isn't from Stockport and uh, the, the one I um, I always remember is Paul Merson being interviewed probably in a Gascoigne documentary it might have been because he was at Middlesbrough roughly at the same yeah. time and, and he I think said Middlesbrough debut was against us Merson possibly yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and he's talking about this game Merson. he said we, we, we played at Stockport County I thought you've gone right up in my estimation mate I, he said he the same on Stockport. Kevin yeah. he didn't he, maybe in that I was not talking yeah, he, uh, he said Stockport County Stockport County yeah. not, not Stockport yeah. which everyone says and it's just like it's just saying the town name you know you're not making an effort there but yeah he, yeah. he, he remembers to say the county and, and Lofty off of East Enders did the same, so fair play. But yeah, I used to I used to love watching these videos, and uh, particularly this year. Obviously, I think they did. I called it the second quarter of the highlights tape. I think they ended up bringing out six. This the six year, of them, I think, because it was yeah. so such a good year. And obviously, ninety-seven games. I think you used to bring them out after so many games. Yeah. So uh, fifteen games. Yeah, because this that one it had the first West Ham game on, but I don't think it had the uh, the replay. Right, the second, cool. The replay, yeah. Yeah. I think it was just the first game. I'm not sure where I read it. It's, it's, in, one, it's in one of these pictures that you sent over, but there was somebody complaining about Granada. Yeah. And that seems to be a theme, doesn't it? Of the it 90s. was at the time, yeah. yeah. I think it was actually me at the start, because I, I was saying, uh, sitting in the Barlow stand for the Hammers game, and I was, I was behind uh, That's it. John yeah. Helm, and um, I was hearing this conversation with Richard Harnwell, and John Helm was saying he was amazed that Granada weren't showing highlights, because Carlton down in London, who were the franchisees at the time for London, were they were showing highlights of West Ham against Stockport in the, re in the cup replay. And uh, Granada weren't, and you, you know you begin to think, are, are we being paranoid? Is it a bit conspiracy theory-ish? But when you think about it, actually, yeah, this is a big game, a big, big game. Just because you're paranoid, don't mean they're not after you. <laughs> I always remember no. as well that when we played Burnley in the playoff final, um, we were listed as being on live um, in the Stockport Express that came out the Wednesday before. So Granada would committed to showing the game mm. to the extent that Stockport Express had put it in the in the TV listings, and it was pulled. We did we didn't get shown on on the Sunday again. And again, you know, you think, is it paranoia or is it just the fact that some dick at Granada doesn't want to show us? I don't know. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, it's funny because I don't know if I've been fed or been influenced by my stepdad at the time, but it just felt like on Granada tonight we didn't get a fair fair crack of the whip. Mm, you know, yeah. our goals were shown last, or yeah. you know, even if we'd done a really, really, really impressive display, it was it was somewhere down the pecking order. Yeah. I even thought, like, what, I mean, I didn't have Sky, I had to go to my uncle's house to watch the games that were on Sky Sports that season. But I just remember being pissed off constantly with Andy Gray because he was just so condescending. So you can imagine my delight when yeah. it all, all that shit came out about him and he got banished from the telly. <laughs> I was like, fuck off. Yeah. Says you're right. To be honest, that's one of my one of my rants is comment commentators. And we'll, I'll probably go into that into another, yeah. you know, lower, especially in the lower leagues when it's all about, they, they, they sort of, go towards what they do for a living mm. and the fact that they do something in this oh and, and the plumbers open the scoring exactly yeah. yeah it really pisses me off yeah anyway I'll, I'll write a bit about that <laughs> <laughs> yeah there doesn't seem to, especially yeah when a non-league team gets uh, like the later rounds of the cup and it, yeah it's all about the jobs and stuff it's like well they've got through like yeah. they've played like 15 games in this cup competition they started in August you know yeah. what I mean but it's even it's even at international level it's like I don't know if it's if it's England are playing I don't know um Maybe not San Marino, but someone of that ilk or yeah. a bit higher than San Marino. They will, they'll, 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 they'll belittle them all the time. Yeah. Clive Tilsley is an absolute arse oh, for it. One, yeah. In fact, I have, I have me, I have me sound on silent now <laughs> when, when, when I'm watching football. Apart from when it's um, BT Sport, man, I quite like him. I don't mind BBC, mate. I've... Uh, yeah, BBC is okay. Um, he goes on the risk of Lawrence and popping up though. I have no problem with Lawrence. Oh, go on. I remember no, one of go on. <laughs> I remember before, was it, it would have been the 2006 World Cup because England played Jamaica. Darren Fletcher, that's him. That's him. Oh, yeah, he's alright. Yeah. Yeah, he's alright, sorry, go on. Uh, yeah, England playing Jamaica and a friendly at Old Trafford. And do you want to break in play? Motson says to Lawrence, and he's like, obviously, a few songs have been released supporting the England team. Obviously, we've had three Lions in the past, a load of new ones. I want you to, I'm going to give you a few minutes to think, I'm going to let you know, ask you, and you can tell me what your favourite one is. And about 20 minutes go by because there's like a few goals going and he comes back to me thinking Laurel must have got a good answer he's like so which is your favourite song then Mark goes, I don't like any of them <laughs> <laughs> 20 minutes for that Mark 
Yeah. <laughs> they, they did a thing on BBC on Football Focus a few years back of um, asking leading figures in the game what they change about football. And it's all like bigger nets, tighter shorts, you know, video referee and shit like that. And Lawrence could just leave it alone. <laughs> just, just leave it. Too many people messing with the game. Just leave it alone. <laughs> no, I've never, never had a bad word said against Lawrence and me. <laughs> I like Jermaine Genus at the moment. Do you, do you know, I like. so happy to be there. He does. I like Jermaine Genus, but I don't like this. Um, t- um, this match, match the day X. No, I don't know what the fuck that is. Because right, yeah. they talk about football. The football, music, and fashion culture. <laughs> Imagine talking about football and music, Wade. And I'm, but I'm, I'm like, hang on a minute. It's going to be, but it's going to be lads who, who, who are who are young and dressed like that. Yeah. Isn't it? Again, sleeve tattoos. I've you know I've I've, I've the jeans halfway up the leg. Yeah. And, you know, wear Vans and don't wear socks. Shoes with no socks. Yeah, yeah. Boat, oh, boat shoes. Boat shoes. All this shit that's going on. <laughs> does my head in but you live 200 miles from the nearest water why are you wearing boat shoes exactly yeah and another, another thing right why why, <laughs> why why in terms of fashion which are, in t- yeah well, well we'll get on to it why are, are young men so eager to move on to the next season no not football season I mean like it's not even winter yet and you're wearing a ghillie with a scarf and fucking gloves and walking around Manchester as if it's as if it's December the 24th I mean, it's pretty cold. Like fucking that. stop it! Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't three weeks ago. No, no. <clears throat> and then in February, you'll so, you'll get some dickhead walking around Stockport in a pair of shorts. <laughs> I'm not having it. It's them little tiny bags they wear <laughs> that can't possibly fit anything in. Yeah, little man bags. Just like a ten bag. Yeah, and yeah. Some six. <laughs> That's literally all I get. Ten bag and a Johnny. That's all you get in them bags. I just don't get it. Anyway. That, that, that's just a little bit of Russ's <laughs> rant. <laughs> we just took we just took the iceberg. Little bit of feature that's going to be coming yes. from next month. Yeah. <laughs> so we've had. So that is that the t- is that the part? Yeah. Part? I, I, I did notice this, um, there's talk in, in there of an injury crisis at some point. Mm. And I said that at one point there was. A, I think the game got called off in the end. But there was a danger of Richard Landon having to play. <laughs> it's like, do you think he's still registered as a player? <laughs> I think he just got locked in a cupboard celebrating 96, 97. And ever, he just, well, he was in there. He's like, oh, I might as well sort the kits out. <laughs> ever since then, he's just stayed. That's it. Oh, I'll never forget that one. I think I've said it on a previous podcast, but that one you had on on in the tea party, and it was a it was a full page. I think it was on the back page or or, or just inside, and it was like, um, thanks for a great day out. Have I told this before? He just said, thanks for a great day out. I've had a lovely time. Met all the lads. I even got given a kit. Yours sincerely, Richard Landon. <laughs> <laughs> obviously, there's more to it than that. Yeah. It's so funny. <laughs> uh, question for you both. If you could recreate one sporting moment and be there doing it yourself, what would it be? Russ? Winning put in the 1992 Open Championships to replicate Nick Faldo. Golf, then. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know, not my thing. But you do. Well, I'm a Tory, as you well know, so I go and watch cricket. Um, and I was there along with John Billsbury, friend of the podcast, oh, yes. um, the Tea Party podcast. And we were both there when uh, Ben Stokes hit the winning runs in the Headingley Test on that famous Sunday a couple of months ago. So I would uh, recreate that. Even I watched that. <laughs> I'm going to have to go for a county moment now, then, aren't I? Um, top of my head, Glenn Taylor's header for Spenny Moore <laughs> against Chortley, all the way. Get in. So why have you asked us that, Ernie? Because it's a little message from our new sponsors, the players' entrance in Merseyway Stockport, where you can go and recreate many sporting moments. And it's run by a county fan. That's, I mean, and it's got Darren Stevenson on the wall. There's a mural of Darren oh, Stevenson on the wall. Yeah, doing an overhead kick, I believe. Doing an overhead kick. I'm going to get on for that. I don't want him doing that. Was he actually doing an overhead kick like as a model for the picture? I don't know. Or the picture I've seen with him, he's got his broken legs, so, or whatever he's done. Maybe that's how he broke it. Maybe. Okay, should we go on to Nick's not quite so big question, but still worth thinking about? Yeah. Nick's not quite so big question, but still worth thinking about. Well, I actually prepared this question before the uh, antics with Sterling and Gomez in, in England training. Okay. But after years of football as being branded as thick, are we finally seeing players actually booking the trend now? Because it used, used to be, like 90s and what have you, like football thick. They'd have Graham Lusso, who used to be the Guardian. Yeah. And then everyone else was thick. <laughs> yeah. But now it seems there's more and more players actually coming out. I think I think that's been the one upside of being in non-league. Well, with a competent manager anyway, because especially from meeting players through doing the podcast, they're actually well-rounded, actually decent human beings rather than just you know just being able to kick a ball. But, yeah. Yeah. but I think I think that's a big part of Jim's like his philosophy when it comes to signing players. 
Oh, it's, it's, it's a very good. It's, do you know it's 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 aptly titled this this yeah, section. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. not quite so big as the other one. Yeah, well, thinking, but it's not as big for us. No, but it's one, definitely but worth thinking about. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, I I th- I think that nowadays, especially at the top level, they have to go through education anyway, don't they? Yeah. I mean, Man City, you've got their own fucking school, haven't they? Or something? Or they're affiliated with something? Yeah, aren't they, they send them to a private school. Yeah. So they've got to be. I mean, Trent Alexander Armstrong was on the. He's pointless, don't he? <laughs> <laughs> Trent Alexander Armstrong. Who am I talking Trent about? Trent Alexander Armstrong. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a hybrid of two people there, haven't I? Trent Richard Osman. Yeah. <laughs> Trent. Arnold. Trent Richard Osman Dembele. What's he called? Trent. Alexander Trent Alexander Arnold. Arnold. What did I say? Armstrong, didn't I? <laughs> Fucking hell. Trent Bradley Walsh. <laughs> Trent, Trent Alexander <laughs> Arnold. Um, he, he, he sounded really, you know, really sort of well to do, if you like, you know, for a scouser. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought he was alright. But have you noticed though? Here's something worth thinking about as well. At, at, when, at what point are we going to have the first eleven of a fo- of a football team? They're all double barreled net surnames. Yeah, because there's lots coming through now. Because Alex Oxley Chamberlain kind of started this on, but Arsenal's youth team's full of them. Yeah, like Maitland, Ainsley Maitland Niles. Yeah, uh, there's there's another couple. Of well, you see what problem I'm going to have, don't you? I'm going to get everyone mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> well, we haven't got any accounting, have we? Have we got any double barrels at County? Festus fucking Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys remember, um, I presume you used to watch Fantasy Football League when it was on? Yes. Yeah, oh the yeah. The one they did for the World Cup, the first World Cup one they did, where they had like a double barrelled surname um, like competition. Oh, right. And um, I think the winner was like a ridiculous one that made a massive sentence. And uh, but one of the ones they came up with was um, two players in the World Cup. They said, just put the names together and see if you can get something from it. And they put... Um, not the first names, but there's players called Big Airy, played for one of the teams, and the one called Ass. <laughs> Big Airy Ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost what I've always remembered because it's still with me now. It just reminded me what, with the talk of uh, Princess Diana earlier. Um, on, on fantasy football, actually, that was one of the jokes that they couldn't get into. After we got knocked out of the World Cup in '98, they wanted to do a poll on the show, like, what would you rather have, England through to the next round of the World Cup or Princess Diana back to life? <laughs> And that was the one joke where the producers said, no, you, you, you can't. You can't do it's that. funny you should mention that because. But Sol Campbell thought she'd come back to life and started like, running around celebrating. I'm like, mental, mental. <laughs> and he saw the referee with his arm. Yeah. <laughs> the vicar with his arm. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I remember talking on the county mailing list about this because I was going to do, um, I think I ended up doing it, I put it in the fanzine. Um, oh, God, what was it? It's something like a candle in the wind or. Oh, I can't remember what it was now. I'm going, to, I'm going to have to dig it out and maybe we'll talk, pick it up on the next podcast. Yeah, yeah. But it was a joke about that and um, I, took, I showed it to a guy at work and I said, do you think I'll get away with this? Because at the time it was really, you couldn't make those kind of jokes. It's like nowadays if you just, like I don't know, let a, let a rocket off during a two minute silence. <laughs> You'd, it was that kind of level of, uh, of hashtag no respect. And um, he said, oh yeah, I'd use it. And I say, oh, that was it. Yeah, it was to do with uh, Ronaldo not, not emerging from the World Cup. And it was like Ronaldo of Hearts or something. I can't remember. Oh, really, really, it was a lot better than that. And he said, "Yeah, make some reference about not emerging from the tunnel." <laughs> I thought that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> well, going back to your original your original um, question yes, that we were yeah. thinking about, uh, yeah, I think the, 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 the coming because they're coming through through these education systems as well. You've got to be. But I don't know if it's all that. I mean, Raheem Sterling in particular, the stand he's chosen to make against the tabloids, I don't think anyone's coached him to do that. I think that's genuinely him picking up from his experience, from the way him and his peers are treated. Yeah, and I think he just thought he off to know that's he's actually going out of his own way because he didn't have to do it to that. You know what I mean? He didn't. He didn't. He could have just sat and taken it like everyone else does. I mean, Ian Wright writes for the Sun. He's he's one of the ones who's going, mm-hmm. who's complaining about it. He's just agreeing with Sterling and everything. But at the same, well, you're writing for the Sun. Mm-hmm. You kind of yeah, I yeah, I'll, pro- I'll probably bring it a bit d- down into the into the into the drudges a bit more. So like um, Jimmy Bullard on S- Soccer AM, mm-hmm. he seems a bit thick, doesn't he? Yeah. To me, he's just like it's, it's he just seems like who you book when Robbie Savage has turned it down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and even Robbie Savage, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's true because what you say is, is right that the top clubs will will sign players when they're like, well, my my little uh, grandson got got scouted for City when he was, when he was six. They'll, they'll <laughs> yeah. take him at that yeah, age, yeah. and if they if they get if they get kept on and they get to eleven and they get signed on, well, yeah. they get signed on at seven or eight these days. 
they will put them through school yeah. and even if they get dropped at 12 they'll continue to let them have that school because they're committed to it yeah. sometimes the parents come over to them if, they, if they're foreign players so they are getting that education at the top but at the same time you're going to get players who drop out of school as soon as they can and, and because they're good at football they'll make it and they won't, they won't be smart but I've never ever in fact let's, let's turn around I've always hated the snobbery that comes with so called lack of intellect if you like mm. and I think well okay Wayne Rooney probably hasn't got many qualifications I don't know I, I might be doing him a disservice but I'm assuming he's not he's not got a degree in, in astrophysics yeah. or, or whatever else but he's got a kind he's got a level of intelligence he's got he's got physical intelligence if you like and who's to say that what Rainey, Wayne Rooney can do with the football is is less of a, a benefit to society than what Fred down the road can do with his PhD in astrophysics that he ends up you know working at Tesco's so I don't like intellectual snobbery is what I'm trying to say I mean I, I say somebody who's, who's, who's you know got a masters for what it's worth I've gone through right at the top but I would still swap my my abilities if you like for Wayne Rooney's like a shot and I, I, I look up to him because what he can do can enthrall thousands it can in a world cup he can it can captivate millions he's made a massive amount of money out of it he's, he's you know seems a decent lad I'm sure I don't know he's not Sterling to use another example yeah. He is, he clearly is a decent one because what he's doing with the anti-racism and, and speaking out about it and how he's being picked on for the colour of his skin is absolutely admirable. And you think, you know, I don't know what still his qualifications are, but if he's got fewer qualifications than me, do I look down on him? Do I have bollocks? I, I look up to him. And, he used and to know him as a kid. Beckham, Beckham, get Beckham saying, oh, it's an old Beckham but stick. Paul, like, that's but, Paul, but the stuff, it, the, the way you could place a ball on someone's head from 60 yards yeah, away. Yeah. There's mathematicians that would spend years trying to work out the formulas for that type of stuff, and yeah. he's just doing it. Yeah. Who's to say that, that, that being able to to evaluate a theory of, of, of whatever it might be that's never been done before and got a PhD out of it is intrinsically better than being able to score from the, his own half mm. and deliberately mm. and, and to put a, a crossfield bass of 70 yards that bends and fades into someone's path. Well, same as the, the, the whole sol- give soldiers football as wages. <laughs> yeah. when, a football, when a soldier can start putting one in top bins from like 35 yards out, you know, they don't talk. Yeah. Well, Paul yeah. Carp called it out in the 90s, didn't he? When he said, uh, everyone says David Beckham thick as fuck, but no one ever says Stephen Hawking shit at football. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, there's a lot of truth in it. <laughs> Got one that's uh, Fred and Rose's patio and gardening services. I've got lo- I've got loads of my house me housemates that I used to live with just every Christmas and New Year it's just every Christmas and birthday it's just yeah daft mugs and what have you. We're, um, we're, yeah, le- we're learning more about you as the, as the podcast go on, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> aren't we Nick? Do you follow football managers' hair on politicians? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes another yes. one. They tweeted one earlier tonight. It was um, I'm sure it's Prince Andrew with Jimmy Jimmy Savile's hair. Oh, this is all I need. <laughs> right before we go into that, <laughs> let's just let's just wrap it up. Yeah. Um, so thanks for listening. Um, Again, we're gonna this we're gonna do Dark Days Part Three very very soon. Uh, probably looking at the twenty eighth, I think, to replace this one, um, and then we'll do we'll continue to do the normal ones um, as as we go along. Um, is there anything you want to say, Nick? No, got nothing to say. Okay, I think we covered it all. I think we covered it all. Yeah, I'm all out of words. I would just add that this it wasn't it wasn't a, a joke that Jim Gannon was hopefully going to come on. He, he he did agree to, but obviously he's busy. We know that we had a joke about it, but. We are going to still try and get Jim on, and obviously, even when we do, we'll drop whatever we've got planned for that week. If we can make it two minutes, two minutes notice, and we'll we'll get him on, and, uh, chat to him about Tea Party, his days, and his, his current position at the club. Yeah, and we will have, um, hopefully, have uh, an audience sort of live podcast at one of the venues, or if not all of the venues uh, that are sponsoring us. So look out for that uh, in the future. That'll be uh, that should be fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cheers for that, everybody. See you later. Cheers. Oh, great flicker by Alan Armstrong. Oh!